Uh, people are coming in through the through the lobby. As you come in, we we didn't disable uh, the uh, the mics, so please do mute yourself as you come in if you are not. And actually, so I'm going to just very quickly introduce myself and my co-host Sabrina Marcheva, who is here with me. We both have the same background. That's how you'll recognize us amongst the, the many beautiful faces uh, within this, this community of communities. Um, we are both working for the Department of Management, Strategy, Policy and Compliance uh, in the UN Secretariat. Uh, that's a big acronym, another acronym, BTAD, Business Transformation and Accountability Division. Very, very pleased to have you with us today for this community session. And I'm going to hand over to Sabrina to ask her to uh, lead us in with a bit of a uh, an opening question. Great. Go Thank ahead, you, Beth. Sabrina. Hello, everyone. So we're going to start with a little icebreaker uh, and ask you to reflect on a question. Um, so what makes a community valuable? Um, so try to reflect on what community means to you personally and the impact, the impact um, being part of a community has had on your life or try to think about the qualities and characteristics that make community meaningful to you. So you should see a pop up on your screen. Um, Liliana, are you saying something? <laughs> Hopefully um, the pop up will come. <laughs> Otherwise, we will yes. ask you to to put your comments in the chat. Uh, ah, yes, okay. here we go. Uh, yes. <laughs> Great. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. So what makes a community valuable? Um, we'd love to hear from you. Think about your communities that you've been involved in. That's and let's right. see what kinds of words we're. Inspiration. Great. Seems like connection and support are the key ones. Um, common goals, shared experience. Yeah, I see a lot of these are around the theme of connecting and sharing experiences and common interests, um, safe space. Togetherness. Members of a group. Support. So for colleagues who are joining, we are asking the question, what makes a community valuable? Uh, you should be able to see the poll in the chat. Just a um, couple of thoughts, words, trying to get ourselves into the community spirit. Welcome to the village, as we said when we came in. We are very pleased to have you with us here today. So any more words popping up, Sabrina? Seems uh, understanding and trust. That's a new one. Um, but I think the common theme is, yeah, collective uh, sense of community, supporting each other, coming together to exchange ideas and have a dialogue. I love these. And that is exactly what we're going to do now so that's a great uh link thank you very much <laughs> um so we'll jump straight in we can see people are still joining um and we are welcoming them as they come in welcome to this uh village community and network session um my name is beth manu watts um some of you know me uh from um, the new work community um i'm also a member of actually most of the communities that we'll be talking about today and that is the the one of the reasons that we wanted to have this session of bringing everybody together. Um, so I work in the Department of Management Strategy, Policy and Compliance uh, in the business transformation area. And I am here today with my co-host Sabrina Mercheva, who was just running the poll. And we'll be um, kind of your, your your guides or your your helpers. I don't know if that's the right word, but we'll be taking you through the session today with a whole host of incredible voices from around the system. 
uh, from work from different communities, different networks um, who have come together to look at this whole concept of the power of people and movement and that, uh, you know, UN 2.0, very clearly, for those of you who've been in other sessions, we can very clearly see that uh, the kind of change that is going to be needed to reach um, UN 2.0, to reach the, the vision, uh, is going to require a huge movement and a huge uh, power, people power and pushing and, and coming together. Here you'll see uh, some of the faces uh, that we'll be uh, sharing with you, with you today. Um, these are members of different communities, the same communities, but all very much uh, very strongly believing in the power of community and to drive us forward. So we know that um, from everything that we've seen, you know, UN 2.0 is not going to be achieved overnight and it really is going to take take um, a huge shift and a, a particularly a huge shift in culture. And this session is trying to look at, you know, who are and how are uh, culture catalysts coming together um, to try to move this forward. There are many communities and networks already um, existing, have existed for, you know, may, in some cases, many, many years. And in some cases, uh, recently brought together and they're kind of popping up all the time. So we're going to Clearly, we're not going to be able to cover every single community and network in the system or in each entity that would probably deserve a UN 2.0 week of itself. Uh, but today we'll give a, a little overview and a, and a snapshot into some of the groups out there, some of the ideas. We're, we're, this is really a dialogue. We want to talk about what is community, why is it helpful, what are the challenges, and how can you get involved, what do we need, and we are going to be bringing you all into the community. So many of you are already members of networks and groups, but we'd like to uh, pull you in, pull your thoughts and ideas in, uh, so we'll be trying to keep this um, interactive as possible. Yes, we need a community week because we have so many people across this uh, great system that are trying to, to work together. So, one of the things that we hear is that, you know, and this is also one of the reasons we wanted to do this session is there are lots of us out there. It's quite a massive ecosystem of uh, community and networks uh, trying to drive change. Sometimes that can be a little bit confusing, you know, who's who, who's where, what does, you know, isn't everybody doing the same thing or is everyone doing something different? But the key for us, and I think uh, I, the slide actually there, I think uh, Liliana, you just uh, put that one up. Maybe we can just go back to it. Uh, the key is that, um, oh, the one before, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, go back to the one. We heard earlier today, uh, yesterday actually, I think it was, or it may have been on the first day, um, uh, we heard from um, the UNDP administrator that uh, Achim Steiner that, you know, there's a huge need to think in systems, this systems thinking approach, and we need to build these uh, digital and I would argue the community ecosystems so that we're able to reach more and more people. Um, and this is what this is what we're trying to do today is to start this, uh, well, to start and continue this uh, systems view of communities and networks in the UN family. And uh, what a busy village we already have, as you can see. So we'll share a slide just to give a, I mean, this again is absolutely not exhaustive. This is just trying to capture a little bit the landscape of the types of communities that are out there. This is focusing on the system-wide communities, and most of these will be uh, will be um, uh, contributing today. So obviously, we have uh, the UN 2.0 Quintet of Change, and you may have heard in other sessions that uh, different communities are already, perhaps they've already been in existence and they're being leveraged, or new communities are being um, commenced to focus on the driving forward the, the, the capabilities that you see here in the five areas, as well as the culture uh, that is needed. And then there are also other communities across the system who are driving the change in, in totality. Um, so just very quickly to touch on some of them here, this is a, just a very quick intro. If you want to find out more specifics, we'll be including a lot of links and ways to, to do this. Um, we, we have Unlock. Uh, maybe people can uh, wave when we 
we say on when we talk about your communities, but you'll you'll come back to you. So Unlock is um, a project of the UN System Staff College that many of you know or have taken courses at. Um, Unlock guides, connects and empowers change management professionals across the UN system. We have Young UN, uh, the network of change makers working across the UN system. We have UNIN, which is the collaborative community of innovators across the UN system. Uh, they, UNIN also hosts specialized communities such as uh, behavioral science, uh, culture, scaling, generative AI and more. And uh, UNIN has, uh, is one of the ones that, for example, has be kind of become organically the uh, innovation community within the, the quintet of change in the UN 2.0 um, kind of ecosystem. I guess that's my favorite word today, ecosystem. Uh, again, in that area and a new uh, community of practice is uh, the Strategic Foresight Community of Practice that was created in December. And that supports the sharing and dissemination of knowledge on, on foresight um, among UN colleagues to accelerate the adoption and diffusion of promising and emerging practices in foresight. We also have a very new, I think the newest, uh, digital community just established, which is addressing the needs for more exchange and learning and collaboration to strengthen digital capacity. We have the data community, so the, the, the Secretary General's data strategy launched some years ago, has actually um, built momentum and, and quite a, an impressive community over the years, and that is now leveraged into the, the data community within the quintet. And then we have new work, which uh, you may, as I said, know me from. Um, uh, that's one of the ones that I'm pretty active in. Uh, so new work is the grassroots community of UN employees accelerating the culture change needed to foster a forward thinking modern UN family. And as I said, there are many, many more uh, communities and networks in the family, um, particularly a lot of communities of practice, networks, um, groups that are entity specific. So uh, we know that UNICEF, UNDP, WFP, IMF, I mean, the list goes on. I'm going to forget to, so many, so I'm not going to try to list them all, but there are different communities within these entities. We have in the Secretariat, we have LIDERA, uh, which is a leadership, <coughs> excuse me, a, commi a community of leadership for all. Um, so really a whole host of people in all different places. So we've had examples in the past where some of these communities have come together, um, particularly many of you may remember a few years ago, the very large innovation challenge called the Reimagine the UN Together Challenge. Um, that was an example of an alliance of some of these groups coming together to create. Actually, that ended up the the, the largest innovation uh, challenge that the UN system has had. So we are very proud of that and want to continue this uh, this emphasis on this network of networks, the community of communities, the village, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that's why we're here today. So without further ado, let us get some very interesting insights from our colleagues. I'm going to come first to Unlock, which, as I said, is one of the longest running um, communities that we that we know of in the for change in the family. Um, so, Sabine, I'm going to come to you. Uh, why are communities so important? So simple question, but why are communities so important for accelerating change? Thank you, Beth. So, so Unlock is convening a network of UN change practitioners since uh, 2016. If, and for us, it's really important. It's a place to learn. It's a place to be vulnerable with, this is difficult. You know, has anyone done this? Can you help? It's, it's a safe place for advice. And, and in people in the initial chat in the word cloud, safe space was one of the highlights. That's how I feel. It's a sounding board to explore how to deal with change challenges because you, you can be lonely. And being a change practitioner is, yeah, is, is a tough spot often. Having a community to tap into really helps. Community data and such as the the change, the state of change management practices that we launched earlier today, will help to provide a level for advocacy and change for the individual member. So it's not a person arguing a point. There is data from an entire community in the system standing behind you as you are influencing and advocating for policies or for ways of working in your own organization. So the community stands behind you. 
boosts your strength and informs your your strategies and decisions. Thank you, Sabine. Thank you. Um, very insightful and clearly communities do play a key role uh, to supporting transformation. Um, so let's look a little bit further. Um, turning to Ruth, uh, wearing both the UNIN and Young UN hats. Um, mm -hmm. Ruth, you've been significantly involved in community building for quite some time. So what are some of the benefits you've seen from these networked approaches? And can you share a few examples of quick wins or key insights? Yeah, thanks, Sabrina and Beth. And good to be here. And thanks for bringing us together. Great to everyone who's also online. Um, yeah, this is very much a topic close to my heart, being in a lot of communities, um, both the ones you mentioned and also uh, within UNAIDS, my other uh, home organization before and also other ones in the group so <laughs> definitely happy to chat about this anytime if anyone's um, excited about these topics and um, mm -hmm. so yeah I just wanted to say I think this is um, like the places that we can really create um, UN 2.0 um, because networks and communities are sort of I think the future and the present in a sense they kind of reflect the fact that often the systems we have don't really deal adequately with the challenges we're facing um, because they're really cross-cutting um, and I think we need them more than ever and so it's great to see so many popping up I think in terms of the benefits like a few I just wrote down I mean there's way more so this is not ex mm -hmm. um, exhaustive um, but I think in communities you have like a, a speed like direct you can directly exchange with many people in a very quick um pace and like quickly get information from across the whole system for example mm -hmm. you don't have to go through all the hierarchies I think also diversity of thought you can bring people um from lots of different backgrounds lots of different um contexts and kind of mix ideas together um I wanted to give an example of that from Young UN which was navigating to the next UN which is a report we did for the high level committee on management back in 2019 and that was really an example of like thinking together so instead of people representing their organization and that perspective it was like humans coming together who have ideas about what the UN needs to change and actually creating something meaningful um and the other thing I want to mention was like spaces for honesty and co-creation um so I think when you can actually come together and again be honest about challenges and recently in the innovation uh, network we piloted um, the innovation fellowship and there was colleagues who were saying, wow, like this is the first time we've actually been able to have these conversations in the UN with colleagues from other organizations about what's actually not working and what we can change. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I think those are just mm -hmm. a couple of things to mention and not being lonely, like Sabine said. <laughs> I think that's super important. <laughs> and just a shout out that we have a book club on community based innovation next, next week on Tuesday. So we'll put the link in the chat for anyone who wants to explore that further. Sounds Great. fun. Thank you. <laughs> And I, I wanted to pull in Kristen here um, to share a perspective from one of the new communities on the block. Um, so from the strategic foresight community perspective, Kristen, could you share a few thoughts? Yeah, great. I fundamentally want to echo what we just heard, especially mm -hmm. the final part. First of all, the safe space uh, that, that we heard in the beginning, but also this co-creation, this collective intelligence that comes out and where you really can, you come to a community and can say, I'm not an expert. Can you... Can I learn how to upskill myself? And this is what is, is giving fundamentally the enthusiasm, I guess. And for foresight, we are quite new, as you said, to launch in end or mid of December. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, uh, thoughts on how to do and what to what to co-create together. And this is fundamentally the nature of foresight. Uh, it's it's the, the, the product as such is this kind of exchange. So it's all about how to approach uncertainty. So this is really much in line with what Ruth just mentioned. Thank you. Brilliant. And then in that sense, I wanted to kind of ask you as well, um, and maybe can start with you, Kristen, just, to, you know, in the kind of like the, the volta fase for that, you know, what are the, the challenges that, uh, you've seen with with communities maybe in the you can talk about you know in terms of um, a, a community that's just starting what what what's difficult and how do you overcome that yeah uh, it's a great question actually and it's a core of what we are doing in in my view it is really about finding 
the unique added value for our colleagues. You know, this community work is in our, let's say, free time or on top of what we do. So it is really about making it specific, making it target uh, friendly and in, in our case, make it fit into the quintet of change area. So not to duplicate what is around, but to complement the others and, and find an interesting um, thing for, for our for our uh, peers. In our case, it's uh, UN to UN only. So sometimes this is also a little challenge because you you want to factor in what is interesting from the private sector, for example, but and which is very relevant for strategic foresight. But still, uh, we want to create that space where uh, at least uh, at the moment we really ask about what is the bottlenecks in your projects to let the others learn from that or how do you get into buy-in. So uh, this is, uh, you, you you have to make sure people are not feeling vulnerable. And I mean, mm. this is the challenge of, of really taking away uh, important added value. And uh, also maybe not to focus or not to fall in the trap to say we are growing at this pace. So not only saying numbers, 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 but also to check and what qualitatively uh, is the outcome. But for that, we are too new. So uh, how to overcome all these things? Certainly through what you uh, arranged just in, in the session, to really speak to each other, to to really mm. become a village, you know, not little little uh, quarters of uh, the same city where we don't speak to each other. So this this I guess is <laughs> is the best value proposition we could get out of it, and to really fall into the different priorities. That's wonderful, and I love the starting to get into this uh, question of. Um, uh, measurement and you know more than numbers and we're going to get into that into a bit more depth uh, later on in the session and with everybody here who we're going to pick their brains um ruth you know i'm sure you recognize some of those challenges that that Kristin was was raising sort of thoughts from your side on the kinds of things that we need we have to deal with and maybe how we can um address those yeah thanks thanks beth and um yeah, I think a few things to say. So one is um, this idea of a network mindset instead of a hierarchical mindset. I'm going to put mm. a link in the chat um, about that. Um, but I think that's a specific challenge that we face in the UN context, because obviously we're in a hierarchical institution um, and it's quite a different mindset about engaging in networks. And I think that's something that we constantly need to create space for and kind of also get recognition and uh, support for, which I think is also one of the successes. When you get that, then you can actually have a lot of space and do a lot of things. Um, yeah. Something else I want to mention was this idea of tragedy of the commons, <laughs> because it's from like kind of, um, you know, resource commons and kind of governing them um, with in a more traditional um, settings. But I think it's really equally valuable in communities that often things that serve many, many people actually don't get very well supported and resourced necessarily, or it's hard to sometimes to make the case for them. So I think it's yeah. really important to recognise the work that goes into actually effectively running and making communities like the depth of work that is needed to effectively do that work is really significant um, mm. and there's some really interesting stuff that's been done in communities outside the event which I've been super excited by and um, which is trying to sort of make more of that visible I think another one is like kind of sustaining momentum over time and kind of moving from communities that are more like broadcasting to actually co-creation spaces yeah. um, and I think there's a whole set of challenges around self-organizing like if you want to go more into that space about how do we actually do that effectively again moving away from kind of the models that we might be used to in terms of management structures um, in our organizations and there's tons of ones to go into there that would be a whole other topic. <laughs> so, no I mean it's, it's fascinating those are a couple to mention. you know people we're all you know at the end of the day no matter who you are and where you are people are people and so the, this idea of self-organization it's not it doesn't necessarily come naturally and it's it's a challenge you know which you're trying to overcome but at the same time it's the reality within all of us so I think it's it's very interesting I mean generally we've got a huge challenge ahead of us obviously all of us working in the different communities and the same you know working together um, you know we're being asked to to move towards you know a UN 2.0 which is basically making the UN ready and able and willing and going for it in the 21st century. It's a it's a big ask. Um, and I think but what is interesting is, you know, you made this point about, you know, the networked approach and the network mindset instead of a hierarchical mindset. And if you read the common agenda, the SG is talking generally about the need for networked approach in general for sustainable development, but also, you know, internally as well for, for us. Um, and so thinking about that, you know, it, 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 the UN 2.0 
kind of arena has been constructed with these, you know, the quintet of change, and it was it has been decided to have these communities of practice within the the quintet areas, um, obviously to push forward this idea of a networked approach. I was wanted to ask uh, one of the representatives from one of the specific quintet communities. So I'm going to come to Julia, um, who is uh, part of the or leading the the new the digital uh, community. Um, Tell us a little bit, Julia, about, you know, why do you think this aspect of, of communities was brought into the UN 2.0 approach and, and what is thinking behind and the expectations of the uh, quintet communities as we see them? Oh, and I think we lost your your image. I'm not sure why. Um, we okay. don't see you. Um, I can see Julia. As long as you can hear me, that's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, Maybe thank you me. so much, Beth. <laughs> Um, no, I think it's been established throughout the uh, conversation so far that um, knowledge communities play this really important role in uh, strengthening any organizational capacity um, just because they create the space uh, for um, good practice sharing and for learning and for the UN's 2.0 vision. It's really important to uh, cultivate the right mindset and culture across the organization. And uh, that is whether it's digital um, innovation or, or any of the other quinted areas. Um, and so from the communities, we expect um, that they support um, that goal by enabling people to connect based on their learning objectives around new skills like digital, um, around um, resources that they found mm -hmm. uh, useful on their learning journeys and um, yeah, on any new approaches. So basically a place for people to come together to share to learn to to connect exactly that's great yeah. okay. thank you um so I, I wanted to pull in liliana here someone who is a champion um, of these networks and quite involved so um liliana often these you know people's involvement in these types of networks is on a voluntary basis so why do you think people should join and contribute um, yeah, so, uh, you know, as uh, Ruth mentioned, I mean, it is resource intensive to run these types of communities and, and Newark has primarily actually um, been run by volunteers. Uh, you know, it started as a kind of official um, network in Geneva, but it has grown globally um, to include people from all different functional areas. I mean, the diversity of perspective that we that we have is really amazing. Um, and that's what really enriches the network and the community. Um, I think it's also really important. It's, you know, it's a space where people can experiment, um, you know, so maybe in their regular work, it's not easy to experiment and try different things. But, you know, as, as part of new work, they can try new things, they can develop new skills. Um, and they can also um, build, you know, those connections, those relationships, right, that we saw in the poll, the connections, the support that you get from other people in the network. Um, and, you know, that could lead to other opportunities in the future, um, or it could lead to sharing of ideas, scaling of, of one project in, in one entity to another entity, or just sharing the lessons learned. Um, and so it, it, it broadens that knowledge. Um, to a much bigger group and to people that you may potentially have never been connected with. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, thank you, Lorena. <laughs> um, so I wanted to <clears throat> switch gears just a bit to talk about measuring impact. Um, so many of us struggle with measuring the impact of culture change and transformation, um, since many times it can be the results may be qualitative or uh, are not realized until much later down the line. So we wanted to tap into the audience on this one with a rapid brainstorm. Um, so to kick us off, Juliana from the Office of Human Resource and the UN Secretariat will briefly summarize uh, the findings on measuring culture change that were presented to the Unlock Network last fall. So here Juliana is wearing two hats, or at least two hats, as a member of Unlock and a leader of the UN Secretariat LIDERA community. Uh, while inspiring and supporting leadership development at all levels. So, Juliana, over to you. All right. So it's a, it's a hard question, and I think that we all uh, grapple with. And uh, together with a colleague uh, from UNHCR, Daphne Munch, we tried to tackle and look into what was being done in terms of measuring culture change. Uh, culture is all around us. Uh, it's, it's, you know, what we do. 
the way that we do things uh, around here. Um, it is based on beliefs, uh, but also expressed through behaviors. And really, as such, we can measure and see if there's progress uh, over time uh, towards the culture that we would like to experience uh, in the organization. So, and so really, the measurements that we get uh, serve more as a health check uh, to see where we are in the culture and to investigate, you know, if there are certain areas of the organization where things are moving faster to look into what's happening there. Uh, you know, that could be upscale to other parts of the organization. Uh, the same if, you know, there's uh, parts of the organization where things are not working so well, you know, what's going on there to understand the dynamics and where we need to course correct uh, in the approach. So through this research that we did for in the context of the Unlock Network, what we found out is that uh, the best way to actually measure culture change is still through uh, staff surveys, staff engagement surveys, post surveys at periodic uh, intervals as well. And I think one tool also that uh, we have found quite uh, useful is the one provided by the UN System Staff College, which is the Leadership Culture Assessment. Uh, they have had a lot of uh, experience uh, with that over the years, and a few organizations have used them, them over time to measure progress of change, and one of them is the, the UN System Pension Fund, which we, we heard from just in a, a separate session this morning. So this is actually one of the ways that we could measure culture change. That's, okay. yeah, it's, it, it's uh, such an, a conundrum, I think, that so many of us are facing. And, you know, very honestly, not just inside the UN system, I think, uh, outside, you know, private sector, elsewhere, companies, people I, I know who work in completely different areas are really struggling with, well, how do we show the change? How do you show exactly what is moving and, and how? Um, and I think one of the biggest challenges that uh, I, I think we all recognize and see is that we often don't have the space um, to do the thinking uh, in terms of, well, you know, what could work, what couldn't work, how do we see this, how don't we see this? So actually, we wanted to, to do something here to give you all a little bit of space and to give you a chance to uh, get into the right mindset or the a clear mindset going into the um, going into the, the brainstorm. Uh, and I think, yeah, Liliana's uh, putting here the, the, the quote that uh, Talia from the UN 2.0 team said earlier this week that, you know, we're, UN 2.0 requires time and space. We need space where all colleagues, especially younger colleagues and those coming in, you know, have a place where they can thrive and shine. And so one one community, um, one community initiative that started and some of you may have already taken part in some of these um, events and initiatives um, that is trying to make space for different communities to do some of this kind of systems thinking and co-collaboration and co-creation. Um, and we're kind of calling it a transformative space. Uh, I'd like to invite Gabe from UN Women, who uh, has been uh, leading efforts uh, in this area who's going to give us a very brief intro into this and help lead us into the brainstorm uh, with you all. So over to you, Gabe. And I know we're having some uh, technical issues with your image, but we're imagining you and you're a wonderful member of our, and you're actually one of the, I would like to make the point, one of the only male uh, speakers here today. And that's also a call to action for all of you guys out there. Uh, we need, we want to get a little bit more diversity in our gender <laughs> uh, spread in this, in this field. So Gabe, over, over to you. Great. Thanks very much, Beth, and to everyone. And, um, as you've all mentioned, I think one of the key things is not only do we need space, but how do we tap into our collective intelligence to actually co-create in a really, really inclusive way and uh, be the gardeners to till that soil, as someone's just mentioned, and to really grow and, uh, you know, and transform the way that we do business. But in order to do that, we need to intentionally create in, um, inclusive spaces that use practices that are really holistic and inclusive. And sometimes we use old ways of doing things to create new things. 
So the idea of transformative spaces is a fully experiential opportunity to tap into those intelligences using holistic ways of learning and knowing um, that often we sort of run, we, we're either a bit afraid to do or we use old ways of doing things. So I'm just going to invite everyone in the next two minutes to just have a little taste of the power of some of the practices and the spaces that we try and create um, through transformative spaces. So I'm going to invite everyone to just stand up right now. Okay, switch your cameras on if you've got your cameras off. And I'm going to invite you to stand up and really stretch out and feel a connection to our global planet, okay? So just take a minute to pause. Take a deep breath. and just really connect to the planet we're on right now. And I want you to just appreciate all the people that are sitting in the whole of the UN and in these different networks. What is it that you appreciate about being part of everyone, this whole ecosystem that Beth has talked about? And was it that you appreciate about yourselves? What do you bring as a change maker into this ecosystem? And now I want you to imagine taking a little journey and reflecting back over your professional career throughout the UN system and others, as if you're standing on top of a mountain looking back through the valleys and the hills and the lakes and the rivers and the seas that you've traversed. And reflect back on a moment of time when you really experienced transformative change in a moment of your professional journey. Who was you connecting with? What was happening there? What impact did it have on your values and your mindsets? What questions did it pose for you? And bring yourself a little bit further back into where you are now. And as you look back over that journey, how has that moment or moments influenced the choices and paths that you've made? And how has that influenced your purpose and your connection to where you are now? And just formulate a quick image or a piece of music, or a story, or maybe just a word that encapsulates that moment of change. And just notice how you're feeling in, in this moment of being there. And when you're ready, you can just take a seat back. And if Liliana, if we have that word poll, I'm not sure if we do or not, um, just yeah. share one word. What is it like to re reconnect or reflect on that experience? And we, we do these things inside these transformative spaces because we, our self-connection, we're all part of an ecosystem. So we need to go back. We need to connect. We need to change comes from connecting to what has influenced our mindsets and what influenced our purpose. And if we create a space where we can connect to not only ourselves, 
but to everybody in the room in a deep and transformative way, okay, we create space to actually allow things to emerge. And that's the purpose of our transformative spaces, to really build a practice in different ways that we can take forward back into our own systems. So thank you everyone for being part of that process and just dipping your toes into a little bit of our transformative space that we have here today. Thank you. Thank you, Gabe. That was wonderful. Um, very inspirational. And hopefully everyone has now cleared your thoughts um, and open space for creativity. Um, so next we'll jump into doing this rapid brainstorm. So in the chat, you should see a link to Padlet. Um, so it's a tool we'll use to do a brainstorming live together. Um, so once everyone opens it up, we can do a quick walkthrough of how to use it. So on the bottom uh, right corner, you'll see an orange plus button. Um, so this is how you'll add ideas. Um, and here you can type text, attach images, um gifts or other links that support your idea um and then yeah there's a lot of different attachment types um or you can even draw something <laughs> that's great um and then also you can um upvote and downvote ideas that you like um the most so the the topic we're going to brainstorm here together is how might we measure the impact of networked approaches and communities? So we're looking for your ideas here. You'll see there's two already here. Um, so try to think about, yeah, how do we measure impact? What are important metrics? Um, and, you know, here we're focusing on quantity over quality. So please, you know, it's anonymous. Um, so don't hold back. There's no such thing as a bad idea. So just the idea here is for all of us to kind of do a brain dump together and collect as many ideas as possible. So great. We we really value uh, your you know ideas, thoughts, and and it can be as as many as possible. And you know don't overthink. Just really trying to get some some seeds. Going back to the gardening again. I think that we're just all in the garden now forever. <laughs> uh, this and of course a village has some beautiful gardens. I think this one has a very beautiful community allotment where we are all. Uh, doing our bit to make things grow. And I think we should explain you don't need to log in. You should be able to access anonymously. Um, and really, it's just, you know, the the idea behind rapid brainstorming is just to throw out every idea, any idea, um, even if it's Patrick Stewart, you know, whatever it is, throw it up there. <laughs> and <laughs> Liliana, I think you might need to refresh because um, I'm seeing more. Oh, other ideas when I open it. Okay, in my great. Browser. Ah, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> love it. That's some brilliant things coming in here. Gorgeous. Actually, yeah, looking and gifts. seeing, seeing here, I'm seeing um, particularly the the message on you know resisting the temptation of obsessing over numbers. I think all many of us base this when we're trying to explain uh, to to our colleagues or sometimes our bosses or people outside, you know, how are we, how do we know this is working and, you know, what are we seeing and how is it, and people want numbers and they want to, 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 to show the, the, that kind of uh, metrics and um, getting beyond that is sometimes quite difficult. You know, we keep saying change takes time, but to getting that that mindset shift is quite um quite complex i was actually going to ask as people are putting in their ideas i was going to ask um lucy from from unlock you know when we were thinking about this session we're thinking about you know what what do we really want 
to to emphasize for everybody here um, and we you know we will hopefully afterwards be able to see from the attendance you know the kind of range of people that we have here we may have some people who are already members of communities we may have people who are interested in becoming members uh, we may have community leaders we may have uh, managers people who have never heard of any of this stuff before we may have uh, you know senior senior leaders and we know that uh, even in, in, for example, in New Work, we have had a number of um, events where we have had uh, senior leadership um, taking part as well. Lucy, we were talking about, you know, what would we like as a as a as the village to ask for? Um, and you you spoke about it very eloquently yesterday. I just wondered if you wouldn't mind, um, you know, tapping into that again, just to sure. give an idea. No, and I just I think that the call to everyone who's not a member of a community yet, I think it's just 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 go and experience the magic that it can create. I think it just it just just dapple and, and dip your toes into one of them. And I think it doesn't take much to see just how powerful communities are. But actually, since we're in the garden sphere somehow, I feel like for for people who um, who are leaders or managers of some sort, I would say there's a clear call to action to me. And I, I came up with an acronym, let them grow. So give them time and space resource community management that doesn't happen overnight and on its own it's real hard work and it pays off if you resource it properly so that people don't need to do it on the side offer your support and expertise be present yourself so be there and walk the talk so give it a, give it time as the g resource community management as the r offer your support as the o and walk the talk as the w so that would be my call let them grow and let <laughs> us all grow Love it. Let them grow. Let us grow. I think this is going to become our new. Uh, we're going to be shouting it in the village from the highest point of the of the of the town hall or the village hall, maybe. <laughs> um, that's excellent. Thank you, thank you, Lucy. And as as you're talking, you know, people's brains are are going uh, like crazy. We're getting wonderful additional <laughs> ideas in here. I, I can't even keep up with them, to be honest. Um, yeah, a lot about you know really looking at how people are acting and behaving and finding time and ways that we can actually measure that um this is this is key i i want to actually come to to shelly who is one of our um real uh, champions uh, particularly within the new work network i know you're a member of many networks um, and communities but you know you've been looking uh, particularly over the last couple of years at at not just getting new uh, members, not just trying to get the numbers, but actually having quality uh, of it, of engagement for community members. You know, would you like to offer any thoughts about you know the the importance of participation and and actually being active in these groups? Yes, definitely. I mean, this is really uh, this is this is growth, right? You learn from others, you teach others, you share ideas, you collaborate. Um, you network, and I think it's it's super key for all of us. But I do want to say regarding uh, participation, some of us are here listening and saying, oh, I have my own work and I just signed up for three unlock courses and I, I am starting tango lessons in, in, the, in the spring. I don't have time for this. So really what you should understand is that active participation is is up to you first of all get in listen get the information know people um see what they're doing there are so many networks around but they are not working in silos so it's not that you know one agency is having uh, creating one department for this and another is creating another. they don't talk to one another the networks col uh, collaborate they share resources it is exactly for that reasons that we do it together. Um, so first mm. of all, show up for you know events and uh, uh, read read our uh, uh, emails, our uh, uh, information, and later if you can find time to jump in and offer what you can offer, because none of us is only the list of job description that, that we are currently performing, right? So um, really take mm -hmm. take your time and and jump in. I think uh, that's that's very very true. We're we're all, you know, complicated and complex and have so many facets to us. And you know, we may not even realize how one of those facets can help to 
drive change or, or or move things in another area that we never never have thought about. One thing we in in uh, in the work with the different communities here, and I think this has been talked about a lot in the other sessions, is you know it's not just the power of consultation or or to, or meeting with each other, but it's actually the dialogue, and really generating that dialogue and the space to talk and kind of find out about each other. And uh, we've run a number of dialogues, as, as many of you know, and I, I always feel really kind of humbled by them because here we have people coming together who they may not, as Liliana said, they may not have met, had any chance to connect um, previously, or it may have been very impossible for them to connect because of their, the, the function or their role or their grade or whatever. And those kinds of spaces allow people to to find their connection points. And um, that's what, you know, this this these communities are all about is, you know, really connecting each other and helping each other to see that there are ways that we can we can do things together. And I think many of you may have been in the session earlier uh, where, where Kirsten Jower of EOSG was talking about, you know, the more that we connect, we remind ourselves of our purpose and why we're here. And I think when Gabe was running through the session earlier, I was thinking about a time in my life and I was thinking what it really gave me was hope uh, that we actually can move uh, and we can make change, even though sometimes it seems so difficult. So I uh, am really thrilled by the uh, by the, the the responses that we've had here as well in the in the brainstorm. I mean, there's just so much richness here. And so now you're all all of you who have joined today, you're in the community now. You are in the village and we will be hopefully mobilizing you further to to take part in 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 other ways uh, as we move forward. Um, Sabrina, do you want to to give a little a little sort of um, recap, recap of the of the of the I brainstorm? Think we touched upon a lot of them. Um, one that stood out to me that you had just spoken about that seems to be the most upvoted is collect voices and often. Mm -hmm. So this I think goes to the dialogues, but it's an interesting concept to look at conversations as like a data point on collecting data, but in this case, you're collecting voices. So I, I really like that. Um, a lot around storytelling, coming together, um, also establishing baseline metrics. So knowing where you started from so that you know how much progress you've made from the initial point. Um, also another one was about um, where did it go? Um, There's so many so, of them. <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, they, it keeps the list keeps growing. Oh, another one about you know getting started and adjusting when needed. So I think that's an important one about um, reflecting throughout the process and adjusting when needed um, as you're you know getting more data and seeing what's working and what's not and pivoting. Um, there was a few around like establishing processes. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a it's a balance, that's isn't it? And that's uh, small steps. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. small. St I love this one. Any small steps should be celebrated. Focus on every gain instead of what is still missing. And we all know. You know the gaps are. It's not as if this is a magic bullet, and and you know just because we're all here today, everything's going to suddenly become miraculously perfect. But the the small steps, and I think that's again the 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 exercise that Gabe took us through. It made us think about them because we don't take enough time to reflect on. Oh wow, I actually saw something move. I saw something change. It's possible, um, and I think that's so powerful. So really, again, thank you very much for your engagement in this session. Um, and we are almost out of time, but we still want to hear from the community one last time. So we would like to, to, to kind of get the village voice uh, and and uh, and re-emphasize the the let us the let them grow let us grow uh, new new uh, tagline. Um, so we ask a, a final question in uh, what is one word uh, on the power of community? So what a word that speaks to you about the power of community. And uh, as you're putting that in, um, I would like to come to the various speakers just to grab your words. Uh, Sabine, 
the power of community, a word. <laughs> Support, trust. Thank you, that's two, but I'll let you have it. <laughs> because Thank we you. are, we like to be. Generous. <laughs> Generous is my third word. <laughs> Thank you. Ruth, what do you, what do you have? Care. 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 We care. We care. Love it. I love it. Uh, Julia, Julia. Uh, I see it highlighted as well in the poll, but learning, I think, is a huge one. Excellent. Excellent. And Liliana. Um, sorry, I was a little distracted posting. <laughs> <laughs> think of a word. <laughs> the power uh, of community. Power of community is people. Yeah. Ooh. Very powerful. We're now now we, you've, everyone's using up all the great words. We have to find some some others. How about you, Juliana? Um, I was thinking diversity and humility uh, of mm. you know being open to accept ways of thinking. Excellent, uh, Kristin. Um, many of them were taken already, so I go with the uh, equitability of equality. So I love it. And Shelley? I, I'll stick three in there. Future in the present, Ooh. right? It's this now. Good. We have lots of creativity here because we are not having repetition. And I like it. <laughs> Lucy, any final power of community word? Yeah, for me, it's wisdom, collective wisdom. So. Excellent, excellent. And uh, have I missed anyone? I don't know. Probably Sabrina. Oh, Gabe, 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 Gabe. It's because I can't see you. That's why. And Julia, did Julia go already? Because we can't see her either. That's true. I think we did go, Julia. No? I did go. Yeah. Yeah. Julia. So let's create space to enable that collective wisdom to be generated. That's a sentence. Excellent. And uh, Sabrina, you have a word? Growth. And I have a word which is you are the power <laughs> of, of community. And that is bringing us, us to our final. Yes, us. Excellent. <laughs> that is it. We're, that, is, that is the word du jour, us. Thank you so much, everybody, for for joining us for this uh, community session in our, our village, in our collective village. You are all members. You are welcome. Uh, if you are not already part of one of the many, many communities that we've talked about here, we welcome you to join. Um, if you are a member or if you are joining, we welcome you and we implore you to be active. Being a member is one thing, but taking the action and, and getting involved in activities and and uh, you know putting yourself out there that's that's uh, really really critical and then yes as 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 Lucy raised you know we we are calling for for leadership in terms of resources but not just this is not about money it's about space it's about time um, and it's about patience uh, you know this is taking time the seeds are sown the sprouts are coming up and we're looking at our beautiful garden coming to fruition. So we really look forward to, to working with you all moving forward. I think there was a poll uh, um, shared at the end, which is uh, actually a, a kind of a, a collection of your thoughts on this session. Just a, a quick rating. We'd be very grateful if you can can also please um, put your thoughts in there, your numbers in there. <laughs> this is a numbers one. Um, and we look forward to having you at future community events, wherever they may be. And um, and now let's go into more UN 2.0 sessions. Wow, mm -hmm. what a week. <laughs> what a week. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, it takes a village. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Be safe. <laughs>